Hello Angela and happy Wednesday to you. Um, I pondered your question uh, for not that long, it wasn't that hard, but it's an interesting question. So you asked me if we had 190 doohickeys in a bag and had an infinite number of bags to split up these 190 doohickeys um, and we couldn't repeat the number of doohickeys in a single bag so each bag must have a different number of doohickeys. Uh, what's the greatest number of doohickeys that we can or what's the greatest number of bags that we can use to split up these 190 doohickeys? And to figure out this question, we first need to think more about triangle numbers. Namely, it's a series of numbers obtained by summing up um, each the numbers leading up to that term. So the first term is just 1, second term is 3, 1 plus 2, then 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and so on. Um, and we can represent these triangle numbers uh, by just taking n times n plus 1 and divide the whole thing by 2. And that will give us this sum, this triangle number. And your problem is very much this sort of uh, sequence, series. I always forget which one it is. Uh, but we have 190 doohickeys, and we have to divide them up amongst a number of bags. This is just, just finding the 19th term in our triangle number, T19, which gives us 190. And so, the answer to your question is that if we have 190 doohickeys in a single bag and we want to divide them up into a bunch of different bags, we will need 19 bags. While figuring out all this stuff about triangle numbers, because it's been a while since I've done math of this sort, um, I also came across something rather interesting, or I think it's rather interesting. Apparently there are things also called pentagonal numbers, uh, based off of pentagons, in which each side of the pentagon, of a normal pentagon, regular, of a regular pentagon, um, gets longer by one unit, whatever your unit is, and you sum these up. And so you get a nice pattern where each gets bigger by one unit. And you also have hexagonal, 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 hex, hexagon, hexagonal numbers. These thingies, hexagonal numbers. It did make me realize that while I have an appreciation for interesting math that does pretty things and can shed new light on certain cool things about our universe, um, ultimately it's just a, a curiosity, just a hobby. Um, I don't know what you would do with pentagonal numbers or hexagon hex numbers, um, but I find it interesting. I have an appreciation, but personally could not spend a whole lot of time researching it. <laughs> I've been, today I've just been cleaning my room, or trying to clean my room. Uh, saw my sister off, she went to the airport today and left for San Francisco. Um, and so today I think I will actually start to clean my room. Uh, while I've been going through my room and all my things, I came across my bookshelf, which has lots of books on it, um, most of which I've read. I've read maybe about 95% of the stuff on this shelf. The other ones were gifts or things I just bought because they were cheap. And so. While going through the shelf, I, I pondered something interesting about how books shape our childhood and our upbringing. Um, both you and I, I think, are very literate. We, like, we enjoy reading and spend a lot of our youth reading books and learning and pondering the great mysteries of the world. And so my question is to you is that if you had to go back in time and give yourself five books to ensure that your upbringing would be however you want it, um, what five books would you give yourself? So my five books I would give 10-year-old Kelsey to make sure that he turns out into the outstanding chap you see before you today. My Side of the Mountain, Gene Craighead George. Um, this is one of the first books I actually found and read on my own. Um, wasn't a sign, I just, I just liked it. Um, it's about this boy who's tired of city living, so he takes a cat taxi out to the Catskill Mountains. I believe, and just decides to live on his own. He hollows out a tree trunk and builds himself an actual tree house. Um, he makes tools for himself, he makes a fishing hook. Um, he also befriends a peregrine falcon who becomes his pet and his companion. Her name is Frightful. Um, and this is, there's a lot of books in this series. There's My Side of the Mountain, On the Other Side of My Mountain, and then Frightful's Mountain. It's a very nature-friendly book. Um, and this is one of the first books where I actually took an active interest and sought out the rest of the series. Um, and I think this book is responsible for my, my craftiness, my ingenuity, and my desire to, you know, build things on my own. Um, this book is filled with a lot of actual 
I don't know how useful they are, but actual blueprints for survival things, um, fish hooks, uh, lean tos and these sort of things. And it intrigued me that, you know, someone this his age, my age at the time, um, could be so independent and make everything for himself. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So I think this is where I get my engineering side from, is this book, My Side of the Mountain, Gene Craig, Head George. Garfield Comics. I read a lot of Garfield um, when I was younger. This entire stack here is just Garfield books. Um, and for the longest time, I have a fire, fireproof safe in my room, and the only thing that was in the fireproof safe were my Garfield comics, because that was the most important thing. And I think this is where I get my sense of humor. Um, some people say um, Jim Davis has kind of lost his thing recently, but I still like Garfield. Um, he's a cat, he's cool, he was fat, I love that, um, and he took, didn't take any crap from anybody, and he was funny. Um, so Garfield, to make sure I had a sense of humor, I would give myself a Garfield book. Julius Caesar, William Shakespeare. Aside from being the first Shakespeare play I read in Miss Nelson's class in 7th grade, 8th grade, 7th grade, middle school, um, I think this is the first play I ever read. Um, and because, you know, it's Julius Caesar, it's such a great play, um, Shakespeare nonetheless, I think this is the reason why it was so theatrical and even to this day, um, plays and the theater are a very big part of my life. And this is another book. One of these catalyst books that are responsible for the way I am today, good or bad. Um, Julius Caesar, William Shakespeare. The Norton Anthology of American Literature. This is kind of a weird book um, to put on your list. Um, it was the bane of many of my classmates' existence. Um, this was the required reading textbook for American literature in my the junior year of high school. And the reason why I choose this book is that for, for, from an intellectual standpoint, it's very important to me. Um, up until the junior year of high school, you know, I read, I enjoyed reading, uh, but mostly um, fantasy stuff from a, a sort of... In, I read for enjoyment. Um, I didn't really think too deeply about what I was reading. And th it was this book and the short stories contained within from some of our, from some of our country's greatest writers throughout the ages um, in Dr. Mark Ott's class. Um, which really made me start to think more deeply about literature and subtext and foreshadowing and all these sort of things that as an English major you would expect someone to think about from on a regular basis. Um, but until I read this, um, I, hadn't really, I hadn't really thought too deeply about what I, what I was actually reading. Um, so this is why I'm so smart today and can talk to you about things like Faulkner and Hemingway. Not that you like Hemingway, but this book. Uh, the Norton Anthology of American Literature. Uh, all a bunch of dead people. Good Omens, Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I would actually pick any Terry Pratchett book, um, and this is actually the only one I have on hand. I think I've loaned out all my other ones. So Terry Pratchett, by himself, is the first author who has made me laugh out loud, um, which is, is a hard thing to do. You know, I, I will chuckle, I will appreciate the witticisms and the the clever plot devices of certain books, um, but Terry Pratchett, the way he writes and the way his mind works, I think, from an intuitive level, um, is the only thing that made me laugh out, raw, uh, out loud while reading a book. Um, I think this is not a controversial choice. Many people enjoy Terry Pratchett, particularly at the university we go to. Um, and Neil Gaiman also has uh, as big or even perhaps bigger following. And so to make sure that I enjoyed myself, um, in my as a 10 year old Kelsey, I would give myself a Terry Pratchett book. Good Omens is a good choice. So I think I need to go back to cleaning. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't done much. Um, there's just a lot of things to move around. Um, it also occurs to me that this might be the last time I am actually living in my room um, during this winter break. As next year, I will go to, hopefully, we'll go to graduate school and will be effectively moving out of my childhood room. And so a lot of this process is figuring out how to pack stuff up and get it ready for the, the new chapter in my life. So I will return to cleaning and I will see you tomorrow.